our last classifier that's pre-trained at least before we can jump into doing a custom train is uh, an action classifier. So this is, there's actually two models we'll look at in this one, um, but this is a data set of videos that have been trained uh, and labeled on actions. And by actions, I mean like, you know, someone picking something up in a scene, someone jumping, someone running, those sort of things. So we'll take a look at that now. Um, so again, this is going to use uh, videos instead of frames. Um, I'm just going to reset my runtime to be a V100 because I want this to run a little bit faster. Um, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, we'll go ahead and check, see what GPU we have here. V100, and then we'll go ahead and connect to our drive account. And then we'll go ahead and install both PyTorch video and transformers, which are libraries we need to run these models. All right, while that works, let's talk a little bit about what models we have available to us. So there are two um, models that have been trained on different data sets. So the first data set is called Kinetics 400. And if you click on this link, you'll see the labels that are available in it. So I have no idea what abseiling is. What is abseiling? Uh, Descending a rock face, interesting. Okay, so that's like going down, going down a mountain. Cool. Um, air drumming, answering questions. I don't even know how that's an action, but anyway, there's a lot of interesting actions in here. But similar to sort of like what we saw with ImageNet is there's a lot of actions, but like I don't know that we're gonna be like uh, applying like these sort of actions to videos. Either way, it exists. It's kind of like, this could be interesting for doing something like uh, Gustav Deutsch's Filmist, right? Like, let's say you take a really, really massive data set of, I don't know, old films or old, like, educational pieces, and you just want to sort by, like, you want to fight all the ice skating clips or all of the hurling clips or something. Could be interesting. Um, probably not super useful for what we're doing in this class, but let's look at how to run it. The other model we have available to us is called Something Something V2. Uh, and to find the labels for this, it's a little hidden here, um, you go to Hugging Face, and if you scroll down here, under Data Fields, you'll see this. Click here to see the list of something, something V2 class labels. And if you click on this, you'll see all of these labels. Now, these labels are called, you'll see it, it's called something, something, because it's action something on something, or doing something to someone to something else. So pulling something from left to right, pulling something from right to left, um, something colliding with something and both are deflected, uh, something being deflected from something, something colliding with something and both come to a halt. Uh, again, kind of abstract concepts, but maybe interesting or maybe like worth at least exploring. Um, so those are the two models we're going to play with here. Uh, they run, this runs almost exactly like all the other notebooks we've been using, um, but I'll just show you really quickly how to do this. So let's, let's load something something. I feel like that's a little bit more of a fun one. Um, so we'll go ahead and once we've selected something, something v2 over here, we'll go ahead and run this cell and this is just going to install our model. And then to make sure we're getting what we want, let's just run this cell and this will tell us what the labels are. Make sure we have the right model loaded. All right, there we go. So here are our labels again. So showing that something is empty, showing that something is inside of something. So it's almost like someone like moving, I don't know, maybe like tilting their cup to reveal what's inside of it, that sort of thing. Um, really funny labels. I'm very interested to see how people are using these outside of this, maybe for uh, robotics or something, like robotics vision type of stuff. Um, cool, so let's run this cell then, which loads a bunch of functions for us. And now let's test this on a single video file. I'm gonna update this, save video. So again, remember this takes video, so let's go to our drive, drive, my drive, algo film, and then clips. And let's check out Groundhog Day. I feel like one of these is kind of an interesting clip. Let's try this. We'll load this up again, and this will at least just output, it'll output it like our video as a GIF, so we can see what it's supposed to look like.
Okay, seems like Bill Murray like sitting up from bed. So let's see what the what this gets labeled with. So we're on this cell to actually uh, compute our label. And what do we get? We get tilting something with something on it so it doesn't fall down. I mean, I guess he is tilting up from bed, so I can kind of see how that's saying that. Um, let's play with another one of these. Let's get out of this folder and let's go to, hmm, let's go to Blade Runner, see if we have here. So let me just grab a random clip and drop it in up here. That doesn't look much action there at all. Um, let's see what else is here. Let me just grab a different one. Okay, someone walking, but there's a little bit of flashing. Let's just see what happens when we run this and see what we get. Moving something toward the camera. So what's kind of interesting here is if you were looking for like push-pull or pan left, pan right, um, this model might actually give you those results. Now it's gotta be that without another action that sort of precedes it or is more important to the way the model sees. Uh, so you could kind of get something interesting out of this. Um, so there's something here that could actually be useful for uh, filmmaking or just film understanding. Um, let's go ahead and then run this on a series of uh, clips using JSON. So we'll go in here and we'll load in our JSON folder um, so we'll do this. And then let's set our filter to be Blade Runner. We gotta spell it right, otherwise it won't find it. So this will just process those like 100 clips or whatever from the Blade Runner trailer, um, and we'll see what we get. So we see some stuff called showing something behind something, holding something behind something, moving away from something with your camera. So that would be a uh, pull shot, you know, so it's the, the camera is pulling away from the subject. There are some interesting concepts here. Uh, don't know how useful it is. It would definitely need to be a uh, run across the entire video data set to like get a bunch of different actions, but it is kind of interesting. I think there's something valuable here that's worth um, sort of exploring. All right, so just like other notebooks, um, we can also sort by these action types. So in this case, let's go ahead and um, load in. I feel like I need to update my notes here. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, the challenge with this is that we've got a hundred and some labels, so we're gonna need to pull those in. So I'm gonna change my label. I'll leave it, yeah, that works, it's string. Um, we are also getting confidence scores, are we not? We are not getting confidence scores. It's not being output, but they are being stored. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and then think about what that might look like. So let me just see what our confidence were up here. Oh, I cleared that, okay. Um, that's right, let's just assume, let's just guess, like let's say, let's set a confidence score of, um, I'm just going to load these to load in our function for creating a timestamp. Our JSON folder is already loaded, so we can skip this one. And then come down here and let's just type in a caption. And this is where the problem is that this stuff needs to be removed. So we'll do label. label from your models classes. So remember, if you're using something something, then the something model is, you have to input the something label here. If you're using the kinetics model, then you need to input the kinetics model here, uh, or sorry, the kinetics label. So let's see what our labels were. Let's just grab one of them from up here. Uh, let's see, moving something toward the camera. So this will be a push shot. So we'll see what, well, how many kind of push shots we have here. Um, so go ahead and grab this. 
Uh, the min confidence. So remember, remember, this is going to be, I believe, a score. Actually, you know what? I don't want to cheat here or try to figure it out. Let me just download this file, and we'll take a look at it in Prettify. So let's go Prettify JSON, because I never remember the URL for this. Save this. We'll load in our file. And let's take a look here for, uh, this would be something, oops, search for something. There you go. So this score is, it's giving me a 1.0 value. Let's see what else is here. A four point something value, five point something. Okay, so this is taking the video MAE uh, confidence score. This is the other challenge is like, some of these have different scoring mechanisms. Uh, you know, a lot of the models we've been looking at have a like, something under 1.0 score, so 50% is 0.5. Uh, this is just giving a different score, so it tends to give uh, a number, usually up to 10, I think, is usually what it works with. So let's actually set our confidence score to be, actually, I think 0.3 feels about right. There's a lot of labels. Um, maybe we could do like 0.4. Um, so we are going to sort through all of our Blade Runner images. Kind of spell that right. And we are going to look for our labels with moving something toward the camera with a minimum confidence of 4.0. So let's go ahead and run this and see how many clips we get. Don't get any clips. Why is that? Let's set this to zero and just see if there are any that were... Okay, two clips. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. Yeah, that might be right. Okay, so instead instead of just using X or Blade Runner, let's use. I've already like run this on a bunch of other clips as well. Um, so let's say we grab from all of uh, our data set and grab anything labeled moving something towards the camera. Forty eight. Okay, cool. So let's run this. So let's do content drive and we'll call this uh, push shot. And we'll keep these dimensions here. So now we can. Um, grab all of our films that match these, and actually let's bump the confidence up a little bit. Let's say two. No, oh, still 48. Uh, let's do four. 31. Okay, so we're going to get uh, anything that is labeled as moving towards the camera with a minimum confidence of 4.0, and we're just going to go across the entire data set, and then we're going to make a film. Let's go ahead and do this. So what I'll do is I will then um, upload this to Vimeo so you can go and check it out. So that was something something. Um, you, the exact same steps can be uh, done if you want to use the other model, which is Kinex. And remember, Kinex has the ab sailing, uh, ice skating, whatever. So exact same thing applies there. You just want to make sure that when you are pasting in your label here, that you are. Oh, sorry, not there. Um, right. here that you are using the correct label for the right model. Uh, now one thing that's happening in this notebook is for you to assign what the model is, you need to load the model into um, your runtime using this cell. Um, so if you don't use this cell and say you've already like uh, done all the classification using something something, but you'd previously done kinetics and now you want to sort by kinetics, um, you need to switch the model uh, and load that in. As we get further into the class, I think like week four, week five, like actually probably week five or week six, I'll have a whole tool that will allow us to sort by keys and do all sorts of fun things. Um, but for now, this is a little, you know, a little rough. So um, just remember that if you are looking for uh, to collect by a certain classification model, you need to then load that model in to then be able to run that and find the right uh, JSON keys. Um, okay, so I will upload this and uh, kind of just see what it looks like. I'm actually kind of interested to see what other people get with this model. Um, I think there's some interesting concepts here, but there are so many labels and they're all kind of obscure. That I don't know how many people, like maybe if you have a skating film and you want to, I don't know, some, like maybe like Mighty Ducks. I would assume ice hockey also counts as ice skating. Maybe not. Um, 
let's just say you want just the skating scenes from that, uh, you could pull those out using this tool. Um, it'll probably give you other actions, and you can like ignore those and only keep the ice skating ones. Uh, but anyway, interested to see what, what people make out of this. Um, so from here, we're going to move on to I think doing some object detection, which is a slightly different way of doing classification, um, but it will give us slightly different results, which is kind of going to be interesting and fun to see what happens. So I'll see you in the next video.